Good afternoon, everyone. The topic I'm going to present is SVPRDF invariant shape and reflectance estimation using light field cameras. It's a joint work with Mohan, Alyosha, and Ravi. Most existing multi view methods will assume the object is version when estimating the shape of the object. However, many real world objects are actually glossy. So estimating the shape and reflectance of these objects is often much harder and requires more efforts. To solve it, many previous work will adopt an iterative approach which alternates between solving the shape and reflectance. A very few work can actually decouple these two and try to directly solve one of them. One work that did this is the differential motion theory. However, you assume that all pixels in image have parallel viewing directions and the homogeneous PRDF of the object to obtain an identical solution. So our contribution is that we do not make these assumptions and derive an SVPRDF invariant equation. Using this equation, we then start shape using a quadratic regularization. So let's first take a look at how we derive this equation. To derive it, we build on a differential motion theory. However, instead of using differential camera motions, we use the live view camera instead, which it can be thought of as the multi-camera array, but contains much more views, so it should be more robust. We then extend the traditional optical flow to handle a glossy object case. So first, let's refresh the traditional optical flow. So suppose there's a camera and an object which is imaged at some position u on the camera plane, Z is the depth of the object, and F is the focal length. And now suppose this camera has moved horizontally by some distance tau x, and we want to compute the difference between these two images, namely the difference between the blue ray and the magenta ray. To compute it, first know that this object will also be imaged at some other position, u prime, on image plane 2, and since traditional optical flow assumes the object is conversion, these two rays should share the same intensity. So the difference between these two highlighted rays should be the same as the difference between these two highlighted rays. And since these two rays are on the same image plane, we can just compute it by multiplying the image derivative by the length of the segment. And then if we further define beta as 1 over f, the equation can be first simplified like this. Note that in this equation, if the camera motion tau x is known, then the only unknown in this equation is just the depth z. So in this case, the depth can be uniquely determined. However, many real world objects are actually not diffuse, so let's take a look at our BRDF model. So our model contains a diffuse term plus a one no unknown function of the half angle. Suppose there's a surface, and n is the normal at some point on the surface. s is the light source direction, and v is the viewing direction. h is the halfway vector between s and v, and c ties the angle between n and h. So mathematically, our BRDF model will look like this, where rho s is a completely unknown function of the half angle theta, and sigma is the unknown diffuse term. A very important feature of our BLDF model is that it can be spatially varied, which means for different points on the surface, their BLDFs can actually be different. So given that, let's look at how, we, uh, at how we extend the traditional optical flow to a glossy case. Again, we want to compute the difference between these two images. However, these two rays will no longer share the same intensity because the viewing direction has changed and we model this change using a first-order approximation, like the equation shown here. The first term is the BRDF derivative. Basically, when the viewpoint viewing direction has changed by one unit, how much will the BRDF change? And it's multiplied by how much the viewing direction really changed. In this case, it's tau x, where x is the horizontal direction, and we'll include the y direction later. So we call this full term the viewpoint change term. In addition to that, we also need to add the difference between these two rays. And it's the same as in the traditional case, 
and we call it a special change term. So overall the difference should be a sum of these two terms. This is a summarize. The image difference should be a sum of a viewpoint change and a special change. And this is the case where the camera only moves in 1D. If the camera moves in 2D, we also need to add the Y components as well. So this is the final equation. Looking at this equation, we know that the unknowns are the two BRDF derivatives and the depth Z. So we have three unknowns. So we need at least three camera motions to resolve these ambiguities. Unfortunately, we only have two types of camera motions, so we only have two degrees of freedom in the XY plane. And now that adding the direction in the, in the Z direction does not help because it can be reprojected onto the original XY plane, so it can be well represented as the motion in the original XY plane. Since we have three unknowns, if we try to directly solve it, we actually face ring deficiency issue. So instead of obtaining just one solution, we actually get a line of solutions, and we do not know which point on the line is the correct solution. So this method is actually not feasible. To deal with this, instead of directly solving it, we look at the two BRDF derivatives. Specifically, we look at their ratio. So what we'll do next is to represent this ratio in two different ways and try to combine them. Representation 1 is from the line expression. If we project the line onto the x y plane, then different BRDF ratio will just correspond to different phi angle phi on the x y plane, which intersect the projected light and line on the different points. And then if we back project this point onto the line, it will correspond to different z's. So in this case, the BRDF ratio can be represented as a function of the depth z. Representation 2 is that if we assume a single distant light source and a half angle BRDF, then we can explicitly write out the BRDF derivative as a function like this. So the BRDF ratio, for the BRDF ratio, the BRDF related terms will actually get cancelled out and leave us a term of only the normals. Finally, if we try to combine these two terms, then we can eliminate all the BRDF related terms and get an equation that depends only on shape and invariant to a special invariant BRDF. So given this equation, we can then try to solve for shape. Unfortunately, directly solving it will require initial conditions, so it's again not feasible. To deal with this, we assume that the shape is locally a polynomial. Specifically, for each 5x5 five five patch, we assume that the depth z is a quadratic polynomial of the special coordinates. And any a here is the shape parameter. By doing this, the depth and the normals will all become functions of a. If we plug this into the original equation, the equation will also become a function of a, so we can just solve this using some standard optimization tool. Finally, after shape is recovered, we can also try to estimate the reflectance. So recall that the solution will lie on a line, as shown here. We just do not know which point on the line is the correct solution. However, after depth is known, we do know which point is the correct one. So the two BRDF derivatives are also known. Finally, by integrating the derivatives, the original BRDF can also be recovered. Let's look at some results. For synthetic scenes, we render spheres using a moral BRDF dataset to get simulations of the light field images. And for real world scenes, we just use images taken with the Lightroom camera. This is a synthetic example. We linearly blend two materials from left to right for the input image and below is our recovery shape. Here is our recovered and the ground truth BRDF at the red point in the input image. And these are the BRDFs at the green point image. So as you can see, they are very similar to the ground truth. Finally, we show a lighting example, which again looks very similar to the ground truth. For quantitative comparisons, 
We divide the 100 materials into 9 different categories and report their average errors in each category. Note that our method achieved the lowest error compared to all previous methods in all different categories. We We also did experiments on using different number of school cameras as a system input. You can see that as we use more and more cameras, we get more system robustness, which is the advantage of using live field cameras. This is the real example taken with the Lightroom Loom camera. You can see that our methods will generate artifacts around the most backer regions where our method can realistically recover the shape. This is another example. Note that our methods will fail as the specular regions. To conclude, we derive an SVPRDF invariant equation. Using this equation, we can then stop shape using a locally smoothness prior. Finally, after the shape is covered, we can also estimate the reflectance. We thank the following sponsors. Thank you.